Greetings, fellow fiends, and thanks for dropping by the Horror Zone. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's segment is going to be another Boogeyman Break Time segment. But in this case, I'm actually going to be doing an on-location uh, video as well. So it's going to coincide uh, with uh, my review or thoughts about this movie. Less of a review and more of a retrospective about a movie that I really enjoyed uh, uh, as a kid. This was a film that I discovered in the summer of 1988. The film came out in 1987. And it was one that uh, my grandfather, who I've mentioned many times on this, uh, you know, on, on the, in some of these videos, I've mentioned him in several videos, especially ones dealing with Sylvester Stallone and the Rocky and Rambo franchises. Um, my grandfather and I were really close. And it's going on nine years since he passed away, but uh, during the summers when I spent time with him and my grandmother in Manteca, California, uh, we would rent movies from the video store all the time. And, uh, you know, it just, it had, just had to be interesting, even though I was a, a pretty young kid at the time. Uh, this summer I would have been 14 years old. Um, we always would find uh, movies that were interesting or, you know, just something that, uh, you know, uh, it, whether it be action, comedy, horror, um, they pretty much let me watch anything, which was really cool. And, and I had some really good, uh, really great memories. And uh, lately just, um, just because there's so much downtime right now outside of work, uh, I'm not really, you know, doing anything because of the state of the country and the world and everything right now. Um, it's pretty depressing. So what I've been doing a lot is really reminiscing, reminiscing about uh, my childhood, uh, movies that really influenced me and ones that uh, I enjoy revisiting and, and remembering those good days. Um, this film is one that, uh, yeah, I, I've always been a fan of it, and just recently I found it on DVD. I'd like to get the Blu-ray. I know there's probably a better quality one, but uh, I'm talking about The Principal, and this is a movie that stars... Uh, he went by James Belushi in this, but I've always called him, referred to him as Jim Belushi, because as his career went on, he went by uh, Jim Belushi, not James Belushi. It also features uh, Louis Gossett Jr. and Radon Chung. This film was actually uh, shot in my backyard, pretty much. It was shot in the Bay Area in 1987. Um, the uh, footage for the school uh, where the uh, Rick Latimer, uh, uh, Jim Belushi's character starts out in the movie was shot in Walnut Creek, which is really close to where I live. And uh, the scenes for the high school Brandell is actually in Oakland, California. And there was also some uh, footage that was done in Alameda, California, um, where uh, the bar Johnny B. Goods, which doesn't exist anymore, uh, but that uh, opening scene where Rick uh, attacks his ex-wife's uh, lawyer slash boyfriend in his Porsche uh, then in Alameda. The bar doesn't exist anymore. But even uh, some of the scenes of Rick driving to Brandel, uh, some of those took place in Alameda as well. Um, but before I get to the location stuff, just wanna give a little history about this film, talk about the plot and uh, the cast and crew that made it. So The Principal was written by Frank Desi and directed by Christopher Kane. It features Jim Belushi as Rick Latimer, Louis Gossett Jr. as Jake Phillips, Radon Chung as Hilary Orozco, Isai Morales as Rami Rojas, uh, Kelly Minter as Trina, uh, Jacob Vargas as Arturo, uh, Troy Winbush as Emil, JJ Cohn as White Zack, Michael Wright as Victor Duncan, the plot deals with a hothead uh, high school teacher named Brick Latimer who screws up his job at a suburban high school at the beginning of the film. Um, he's given one last chance by the school board. As opposed to being fired, he's offered the uh, assignment of school principal at a violent crime-ridden high school named Brandel. Uh, once there, Latimer teams up with the head of security, played by Louis Gossett Jr., in an effort to clean up the school and stop the narcotics trade. By doing so, though, he comes to blows with the main drug dealer and his gang. Now, there was some criticism about this film. Um, I've heard about it in recent years, uh, especially, you know, because it deals with a white man going into a primarily um, Hispanic or black school and kind of being what they call like the savior. Uh, I never looked at it that way. The movie's about redemption and not just for the Rick Latimer character but for all the characters in that. They all help one another to come out of the ruts that they're in. All the main characters were in a crossroads in their lives of where to go and what to do. That's why I never looked at it on racial terms. I looked at it as, you know, how things in your life just don't turn out the way that you think they're going to. You have dreams, you have goals. Um, you have people that help you get to a certain 
plateau in your life if you want to call it that and then you either screw it up or life just throws you a curveball and I also think the movie's about inspiring people to be better human beings. I mean, there's a lot of elements of that in the film that I think it overlooked. And I think it's a really beautiful story because the Rick Latimer char character is such a screw-up at the beginning of this film. You know, once he's put in this situation where he doesn't have everything handed to him, that he has to actually do something for the greater good, um, you actually see a redemption to him throughout the film, and it's a really, it's, a, it's an arc. And you actually see him uh, not only want to clean up the school, but also rekindling his passion for teaching and reaching students. And um, I also think the character, the other characters in the film are really, uh, really well drawn out. I love Louis Gossett Jr. as Jake Phillips in this. I've always loved Louis Gossett Jr. I think he's a terrific actor. And I think the rapport between him and Jim Belushi is fantastic. They really have a good uh, dynamic. Also, Isai Morales, Jacob Vargas, Radon Chung, um, all of them give exceptional performances. Um, I have to say that Michael Wright as uh, Victor Duncan is is very creepy. There's something really eerie about the way he plays uh, this character. I also think the setting of the school is really well done. You just see what, you know, there's so many uh, elements that are touched upon in this, um, you know, with characters dealing with having children at an early age. You also see uh, what the ramifications are about making these kids go into classes and how it's affecting the, the teachers as he's trying to get the kids out of dealing drugs and out of the hallways of the school and back into the classrooms. What negative impact that's having on the teachers in the school so I thought there was some really well drawn out situations yes there are some action movie moments and I felt like it was really well grounded even though there are some action elements that you know are choreographed and, and things happen in a certain way but um, I've always loved this film it has a lot of heart to it um, it's brutal in spots it's it's it, it really terrified me about what high school was gonna be like because I saw this when I was still in uh, just getting out of middle school um, but this film has always been a, a very special movie and, and the strange thing for me is that I know where these locations have been in terms of the locations uh, where some of these things were shot. There were some pieces in this film that I, I just couldn't track down uh, where they were. There's just nothing online about them. So, yeah, I hope everyone's going to as excited as I am uh, to go on this journey and check out the locations from the principal. So I'm standing in front of uh, Northgate High School. This is in Walnut Creek, California. Um, this was the location for uh, that served as Willoughby, uh, the school where Rick Latimer works at the very beginning of the film.
So I'm standing in front of North Oakland Senior Center, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Plaza. This is the setting for Brandel in the movie The Principal. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by. Um, thanks so much for checking out this video. I know it's not horror, but uh, um, it's it was it was a movie I just wanted to talk about, um, and uh, I was so excited to do an on-location video because you know unlike some of the places I've gone, which are very long drives, and I can't really do that right now with the quarantine and all this stuff going on. This one was really close, so I was able to do it in a safe way, and uh, a lot of fun and uh, this has been a, a real fun experience and thanks so much for all the positive uh, messages and all the comments on the videos that I've done uh, really means a lot. If you guys have seen The Principal, if you guys are fans of it, if you don't like it, uh, just share your thoughts down in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from everyone. As always, thanks so much for dropping by and I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy. Peace. Thank everyone for taking this time to drop by the horror zone. It really means a lot to me that people are supporting what I do here. If you like this video, um, please uh, hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, I upload videos at least once or twice a week. It would really mean a lot if people would spread the word about this channel. Um, I This is a passion of mine. I love the horror genre and uh, I'm really happy to share uh, my love of it with all of you. So thanks so much again for checking it out. I'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.